everybody. I really hope you had a better night than me. Uh, yeah, I'm shit tired, really. But yeah, let's talk about the weekend. Uh, there were quite some matches. Thankfully, the weather was not so great, so this usually means being able to watch some stuff. Um, it all started on Saturday where, you know, I just put on the TV and saw uh, what's on and what's on. <laughs> kind of my default reaction is uh, go to Italy. And that was Parma against Cagliari. I saw the second half. Um, Parma already had a lead. one nothing at halftime. Uh, Javinio very quickly made it 2-0. And then I think there was nothing coming from Cagliari anymore. Um, it was curious to see, I think, of all the Cagliari shirts we are looking at, we never saw the red one that they were playing in. So I guess they have a fourth shirt that, yeah, I don't know if we get to it. But yeah, the, uh, that was a new one. I still don't get the Parma with the black and white cross. Speaking of black and white, I'm wearing the Lusk 100 year jersey. As we'll see, last did quite well. That was from 1908. They are celebrating 110 years this year. Okay. Uh, then, uh, when that game was over, I actually wanted to see what Liverpool is doing against Southampton. I saw it's 3 0. That's not going to go anywhere. Uh, then I was kind of, where shall I go? Yeah, the next game that kicks off is Lille against Nantes. Yeah, so let's go we'll do that one. Um, Lille was dominant for the most time. From what I saw, they got the first goal in the 10th minute. Uh, should have maybe gone ahead a little bit sooner. Controlled the game and I think Nantes didn't have a chance until the 35th. Um, and a beautiful goal in the second half, early in the second, second half, basically sealed the deal. Lille looks like a... They had a so-and-so start, but Lille looks like a strong team. A stronger team. I mean, in France it's PSG and then the rest, in a way. And I guess Lyon and Marseille are also ahead of the pack. Yeah, uh, I actually was curious to see the little kit in action, because when I reviewed it, I didn't, get, I didn't rate it too high. It, like most New Balance kits, it looks better in action than it does when you have a, you can digest it, <laughs> you know, you see it fully on the screen. Um, what it really, what really helped the kit is that the, the blue pants with it. I think that makes for a look that's actually quite nice. Um, not, I said it in my Liga review, the dark green away jersey. Uh, with the white, doesn't look too nice to me. I, you know, I still have the bright yellow and the bright uh, green that they were using in the mid 90s in my head, and uh, a little bit beyond that fact that they're not playing uh, in those colors at the moment. But yeah, they, they were striped jerseys, I think. They're playing in against Juventus in the semi final of the 95 96 Champions League. Yeah, and at the halftime of the little game, I was actually thinking, shall I switch over? There was another Italy game, I think Fiorentina, but Fiorentina was already 2 nothing ahead against Spal. Uh, then Atletico Madrid, but I thought I've seen already Atletico Madrid uh, twice this season and they really did not um, convince me, to be honest. Um, and yeah, so I stayed with it because I didn't want to watch the Valladolid game. Celta de Vigo against Valladolid. I was thinking about it. I was really thinking about switching there. And yeah, I slightly regret the fact that I saw it was a 3-3 game. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, my fault. My mistake. Didn't choose the right thing. And then I guess I didn't watch much more in the evening. I think I, won, I had a little bit saw the end of the Real Madrid Espanol game with a, um, where I saw the highlights. Then where yeah, Real Madrid dominated the thing, but Espanol gave them a good uh, run for their money. 
Um, yeah, I wanted to watch Fulham against Watford as well. Uh, that didn't turn out well. It was 1-1. Uh, I was already over when I saw. And then, yeah, I basically said, okay, let's... I actually shot some videos. I brought, brought the kids to back and I shot some videos. But uh, if you see my videos for the last three groups, I'm sure you can tell I'm tired. Uh, I'm not very coherent. I think in one video I mistook blue for yellow. I'm yawning in another one, so yeah. I'm not very proud of these, but I wanted to get them done. Uh, you will see them by the end of this week. Uh, by Wednesday I'm done with the Champions League jersey review. Okay, so um, that leads us straight into Sunday. And again, my nose is biting. I have a slight, I think I have a slight cold. Maybe you can hear it in my voice. Uh, Sunday was always about I wanted to see West Ham against uh, Chelsea, mainly because of Arnautovic. I was really curious how he is doing. Well, he wasn't playing. Uh, from what I could see, uh, Chelsea was dominating the proceedings in the sense that they had the uh, most part of the possession, but they couldn't break through uh, the attack. Uh, the defense of uh, West Ham, quite the opposite. Uh, West Ham caught Chelsea a few times totally off guard and probably could have made a goal early in the first half. Then in the second half, again, uh, not much coming from Chelsea except they had possession. You could see that they're the better team, but they uh, were lacking teeth, and the biggest chance was Yarmolenko. Uh, uh, couldn't put the ball into the empty goal in front of him. Um, not on purpose, but it was kind of weird. I mean, he, the goal is wide open in front of him and he cannot put the header in. Not the first time, but that's all he needs to do. But yeah, this ended in a 0 0 draw. Um, quickly on the kids, the Chelsea away kit looks nice. It just didn't look that nice in conjunction with the West Ham United kit where I really miss the light blue sleeves. Uh, just having the garnet with uh, white and then a little bit of the light blue, I think I should be more there. Uh, it's a little bit of a disappointing kit. They get more minimal, even the crest. They remove the castle, you only have the hammers. Now, yeah, I think they should do better. I think this came when they was a recent change. I want to say it's only the second year that they have the hammer logo, but I might be wrong on that one. Okay, so uh, that was that, but during that time, um, I already saw, I was actually quite nervous and I don't have Sky, because for me, I would have it only for the Austrian League, and yes, I want to watch Lask, but honestly, watching the Austrian League on TV, if you can watch the bigger leagues, uh, and this is especially since, since I was was in America. It just isn't the same thing. Uh, even if you have not so full stadiums in uh, other big leagues, just the quality is better. I'm sorry to say. Although uh, Lask is playing a pretty modern style of soccer, uh, where there's a lot of uh, high pressing, offensive pressing, um, quick movements. But yeah, maybe it's also the Austrian in me that, you know, we always have this kind of minority complex that our product is not as good. And yeah, for most part, if you, uh, most, if you look at the teams that are in there, there are many uh, teams in there from villages. It just doesn't look right. It really doesn't. Anyway, Lask was playing against Austria from Vienna, which is basically the I'm actually not sure anymore, but they're the second biggest team in Vienna. Uh, but for some reason they don't have the huge fan base. Uh, they have the, a huge history, but they don't have this huge fan base that Rapid has. Uh, although it's considerable. Probably because they haven't been that successful of late. I think that even with all the Red Bull uh, shit hanging on them, I think that Salzburg might have even more fans than Austria, but you know, I, might be wrong there. Sturm Graz, I think, also has more fans. So, there you go. Uh, but playing in Vienna, that was a game that I was a little bit uh, nervous about. Last had already five wins in a row. Um, 
but then you're playing in Vienna or Austria was also not playing that well, uh, that bad. They actually had also their streak going and since they don't have any European commitment, um, I thought they probably can really concentrate. They have their newly renovated stadium, which usually gives teams a boost and they haven't lost there. They are fresh off a victory against Rapid in the derby. So I really thought that this might get, uh, this might be a tricky one. And I watched highlights uh, this morning. From what I could tell, they completely dominated Austria Wien in their home stadium. Um, they barely could cross the half. They got a beautiful first goal, a volley from the edge, and yeah, didn't give them many chances in the end. Uh, two goals in any time, put the game away 3 0. Absolutely stunning result. Honestly, it's an absolutely stunning result to me. Uh, and at the moment, Lask is sitting pretty at second spot. But yeah, it was then. What shall I watch next? I was looking at a few Italian games. Again, my knee-jerk reaction is usually, let's see what's, what's going on in Italy. Um, but Roma was already behind to Bologna. Uh, they played actually in a nice yellow <laughs> jerseys that I start liking a lot. Then Lazio was ahead against Genoa. That was actually the game that I was looking a bit more to. But also... Uh, you know, if a game is seemingly decided already at halftime, I usually don't find much um, to watch. And so I put on P Rennes against PSG, where it was already 2-1 PSG. Uh, I got to know that Rennes was 1-0 ahead, but PSG turned around. I think they made a quick, uh, they made a third goal quickly thereafter. So yeah, uh, I was happy to see the Rennes uh, home jerseys. I think they look nice. PSG away, it's basically the France kit in uh, ivory white with a little bit gold. Honestly, they, I, I, they look boring. I know they want to be classy, but they look boring. Uh, it's really that PSG in, uh, is pulling out many kits to just uh, sell a lot of money. Seemingly, they need the money because of financial fair play. That's, that's the reason why they're pulling out the Jordan kits. This white kit with the gold because it's something different that uh, uh, fortunately the home jersey in the league looks somewhat like a normal PSG jersey although it still could use some white around the red. The Ajax look and speaking of Ajax I saw them on the zone PSV against Ajax that's a huge one that's a huge one we should watch that one um, I knew I want to watch Milan at 6, they started quarter to 5, uh, so yeah, it was kind of mm, the first half we can at least get in, maybe if the game is a good one we can get parts of the second half in too, uh, maybe watch the entire game, uh, although, you know, Milan Atalanta would take uh, usually precedence for me. Um, so I watched the game and there wasn't much happening. I actually could watch the jerseys uh, that I reviewed uh, in the Champions League. You saw those already. Uh, the PSV jersey on the back looks much more sensible than on, on the front. The stripes on the back are folding over weirdly to the front. That that's why you have this weird shoulder part. This is the stripes coming from the back. Of course, they have the red shield, and then on the bottom, some, uh, some stripes. And the color, it just looks too weird. Um, I think if they would go for a stripe look like this one, that should be fine. But uh, this is an umbra shirt that's just trying way too much, in my opinion, honestly. So, that was not, it's not a pretty one, and also the Ajax away shirt. I think the base should be a light gold, pro, probably, but uh, they were it because PSV played in black pants, in black with the uh, beige pants that are fitting to it. It really made for a weird look on the field, especially since uh, I always had the feeling that Ajax is playing without shorts, honestly. And yeah, I probably should have because they shitted themselves quite some. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit, I'm using too many bad words <laughs> today, that's about the mood I am in. Uh, and now with all this traffic here, uh, the last three 
months I've never stopped here uh, where I'm right now it's just horrible but that's why I'm making the video so yeah uh, Ajax there was not much happening for most of the time except for a uh, rather rude attack by Tadic I actually was it was in, in interesting that I knew a little bit more about the Ajax lineup than the PSV lineup uh, although Luc de Jong of course is PSV um, then there was one chance that the Ajax goalkeeper saved it seemingly was clear and then from outside the box PSV rolled one in two minutes later uh, again a chance and they are completely caught off of guard there's one striker offside who's moving back the other one is onside moves in front has it the easiest thing to get it into goal and then shortly thereafter it's three nothing and the game is done and it was a little bit i had this inkling that it might go this way because the last time i saw these two playing was when psv fixed the title against Ajax where they also were ahead 2-0 uh, very shortly and it ended in a rout. Um, I guess the Dutch Championship is done with that result um, unless someone else is coming up but Ajax was seen as probably the closest contender and nothing like that. Uh, that doesn't look good and it's uh, weird because Ajax came off a 3-0 win against Ajax and PSV lost 4-0 to Barcelona and now they reverse route. Speaking of Ajax, I of course also looked a little bit the results. There was a big game in Greece, the champion against the vice champion Pauk against Ajax. Pauk won to nothing, so another good win for black and white teams. Uh, so yeah, the Greek league. Pauk has a pretty hard program. I saw they play uh, two games Ajax and then Olympiakos. So, um, will be interesting to watch that one. Unfortunately I don't see anything of the Greek League. Uh, as for some reason I don't see anything of the Turkish League. Only if there's a big game. They show it on the zone and I haven't seen it so far. I could have watched Denmark uh, yesterday. Uh, Aarhus against Brondby or something, something like that. But yeah, I switched around further and then of course it was Milan against uh, Atalanta. And Atalanta is this opponent that is just the peskiest around. Uh, it's, if you manage to win against Atalanta, this is actually a big win. I have to say it like that. And yeah, after two minutes, Iguain, after a beautiful assist by Suso, made it 1 0. And that is within a week, Iguain made three goals for Milan. Uh, I was happy to see that. And he's actually quite active uh, in play. The one player that disappointed me yesterday was Chalanoglu because there was nothing coming from him. Absolutely nothing. Um, but yeah, Atalanta had a huge chance in the first half, but actually should have been Milan up. By, could have easily been up by 2-0. Uh, they had a second goal that was unfortunately rightfully taken away. Sometimes you gotta hate war. Uh, by the way, did you see, uh, I saw the highlights of Sampdoria Inter where Inter had two goals wiped out by VAR and Sampdoria too had one goal wiped out and then I think in the 94th Inter scored the winner. But yeah, that was, that was very uh, interesting, having three goals taken away. And yeah, yesterday there was one goal taken away for Milan. Um, but they looked, as most of the time I see Milan uh, this season in the first half, except Cagliari in the first half, they looked actually good. Uh, overall, I really like how they want to play, it's just the stability in the defense is still missing. Although they have, I think they have a young, good young defense. It's just something I have the feeling, and this is something that also makes me a little bit sad, that Donnarumma doesn't exude the confidence that you want from a goalkeeper. Maybe finally his age has caught up with him. I mean, he's still 19. So um, that's that's still very, very, very young, I gotta say. Yeah, so first half was mainly Milan. Second half, Atalanta came a little bit story back and Gomez 
quickly equalized. Yeah, 55th. So, and at that moment it really seemed that, yeah, this is gonna be another one of those days for Milan. But uh, Sousa gave another assist on Bonaventura, I think it was, uh, scored a nice go-ahead head goal, make it 2-1. And then again, they seem to have the game in the bag. Um, for the 2-1, the one thing that uh, since, since I was talking to Iguain, what I liked, my favorite shot of that game is, when Bonaventura scored, Iguain immediately put his arms up. Not that I, I do expect this that every player is celebrating, but you know, he's the star striker. I'm not sure if I would see this from Ronaldo, for instance. Just... He is part of the team. That is the one thing. Uh, I think he is now part of the team. That's uh, good to see for for Milan, I think, because uh, Milan badly needs his goals, badly. Uh, again, Cialanoglu came a little bit more, but not much. Uh, I also remember Abate came on in the second half. Uh, one of the last remnants of the of better times. But the one time that he could have done something, ah, he completely missed that one with a bad uh, cross into the box. It went nowhere. Bakayoko came on where people expect a lot from him. Um, there was one counter attack where I think there were three on two and he played it in slow motion. He could have played to Iguin, he could have played to Suzo. You could really see that I I I Iguin had to stop completely botched that attack. That, 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 that could have made it 3-1. Um, and then also uh, another one where Egoin, that was actually well taken. Egoin uh, scratched the outside of the ball. It was a tight angle. So there were chances there and then yeah, in the last 10 minutes Atalanta comes up and uh, had a had two, two or three really huge chances. Chances. The other, they had a, for, a huge chance in the first half where again open net and the header kind of, kind, of, kind of get in. Milan had to clear on the line because Donnarumma didn't uh, feel safe. They couldn't get the ball away. Or Rodriguez saved on the line, and I thought, oh yeah, yeah. I hope, I hope Milan makes it out. No, they didn't. Uh, Atalanta scored the equalizer. I would have sworn it was offside. This was by a millimeter onside. Uh, yes, they checked it on VAR, of course. When the referee gave it, I thought, I thought, how can this be? Is this the first time that VAR got it wrong? No, they got it, unfortunately, exactly right. Uh, killed me. Absolutely killed me. Uh, that equalizer. Again, I don't think that Milan will threaten for the championship this year. I think this is between uh, Napoli and Juve. And Juve seems to be the team. They want to nothing. Ronaldo making another goal, of course, and uh, I think then a late one. I think it were two late goals against Frosinone. Um, Roma is in bad shape at the moment, so yeah, I really see only Napoli and Juve doing something. I even thought Inter might go on a run, but I actually I'm still hope, hoping that Milan is better than Inter this year. Uh, what if you play 2-2 against Atalanta at home? doesn't go far. Yeah, and that ended more or less my soccer evening. I only saw in the morning that uh, Barcelona played 2-2 at home against Girona. That was a surprise. So now Real and Barcelona level on top of La Liga. Uh, Sevilla is playing out of their minds. I forgot their 5-1 on um, Thursday. Yes, they won 6-2. Absolutely out of, out of their minds. Maybe Sevilla is number three this year. Let's go. I'm, I'm interested to see that. Uh, I know they lost the derby, so, it, uh, so I didn't see much, but they already had a big win at the beginning of the season. Maybe Andre Silva is... Thank you, Milan, for letting go of a good talent that you kind of wasted. This is the one thing with Milan that kind of bugs me. Whenever they seemingly sign a talent, they cannot make it in Milan, at least of late. It's just some observation. It's so often. Well, I mean, I see Bakayoko is the next one. That I'm also afraid that Laxalt, uh, a player that I actually liked a lot at the World Cup, uh, is gonna go this way. Um, I don't know. 
the, they have their squad for, I mean, it seems like what their, the squad, the main squad that they're playing with is together for quite a while. I mean, yes, they had some Chalanoglu, Rodriguez, um, are still from last season, but now even uh, Caldara is not playing. There is something you cannot, they don't do well with young talents. So, it's, I think uh, Baka was one of them. I mean, he, he scored, scored a few, few, few uh, but also expected more from him. And yeah, I don't know, their transfer politics are not very convincing to me. Well, and then I watched NFL. Honestly, I wanted to see a little bit, and, and, and NFL didn't go too well for my Green Bay Packers, but at least the Panthers, my other team, uh, won against the Bengals. Uh, a few records there, but yeah, this is my soccer universe. I'm not gonna talk too much about, about NFL. The, maybe the interesting part is I took part in a challenge where you pick one team every week um, to win. And let's see how far you go. It's the third week and I'm already out. You got two strikes. Uh, I had the right pick on my hand and then I said, ah, no, the bookies, the bookies are very hard on Jacksonville. That seems good. Let's save the Chiefs for later in the season. Stupid ass. Yeah, so I'm out of, out of that. And yeah, well, um, let me know which games you watched. I actually saw a little bit of Arsenal against Everton, but I don't actually know how it ended. Uh, got too distracted, honestly. And you know, when Milan is playing, that's usually that's everything I'm thinking about. Again, let me know how you, what we, which games you saw, uh, whether you agree with me, my assessment of Milan, if you saw Milan, uh, and all the other games. Um, some jersey matchups that you like or dislike uh, and so on. I still have quite a way to go but I think I basically talked all about my weekend. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. <laughs> I know I, I don't, I don't know if I like this video. <laughs> it's because the, I, I'm, I'm a little bit in the ship. Uh, I'm tired. I, I, I need my caffeine fix once I'm in the office. And I should be in a better mood. Last had a big win. Last had a really huge win. Uh, so yeah. And yeah. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see not necessarily more of exactly this, but you know, I give you every every time I watch something, I give you a little bit of a breakdown of what I thought. Um, there will be Champions League jersey reviews for the last three groups. We'll be posting. Um, I hope you will enjoy these. Let, let me know all about what I think about this because I'm about to do Europa League on this. That's 12 episodes. That's gonna be long. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye.